Hello, I'm Dr. Ali Kammerdiner. Welcome to Discrete Event Simulation. This is Lecture 19, Statistical Analysis of Output from Terminating Simulations. I will talk about comparing two scenarios and comparing many scenarios via a process analyzer, also called PAN. So let's recall what we did in Lecture 18. We learned about more about half width and confidence interval and also the desired number of replications to get a small half width which results in, in a better higher precision. So again, confidence intervals is larger or smaller confidence interval better. Why? Of course, smaller confidence interval is better because we're, we have more precision about the output. So if you look at the confidence interval, we use this formula that includes the mean plus the half width. So this simple mean is um, just a simple mean that we take typically get and then in terms of half width it's actually this expression that involves the t distribution student t distribution critical value with parameters n minus 1 and 1 minus alpha over 2 and then we multiply it by simple standard deviation s and then we divide it by a square root of the number of replications So this part, as I said earlier, is a half width. And we want this half width part to be small, specifically less than some pre-specified number h. Unfortunately, as you saw in lecture 18, we cannot control t or s, because these actually depend on n. So, we must increase n, but how much? We talked about two approximations in lecture 18. We had approximation number one, where we replaced the t critical value by the standard normal distribution's critical value, z. And we treated it as if the current s will hold for larger samples. And then this is the approximation that we got. So we approximated the number of replications as the squared, the squared a critical value of the standard normal distribution with parameter 1 minus alpha over 2 and then multiply by the fraction of the squared simple standard deviation and uh, for, for the initial number of replications and uh, the desired precision or desired half width squared. We also looked at the second approximation which was a, a little simpler. And so that approximation actually used as a half width from the initial number and zero replications and also the number initial number of replication and zero. So again we had this formula and in both formulas notice that we have h squared right our desired precision at the bottom of the expression. So the question is if we decrease h what happens to n? Of course if we do that, then n grows quadratically as h decreases. And you can see it, that's true for both approximations. So what did we actually see in practice? Did those approximations work? In practice, the half width is reduced, but not necessarily to the desired degree. So, question is, why does this happen? 
Of course, we are just using approximations, we can expect the precise results. And moreover, formulas assume normality, which might not be the case. So let's talk again about the interpretation of confidence intervals. The usual formulas assume normally distributed data, but that is never true in a simulation. It might, though, be approximately true if output is an average rather than an extreme. And that's, again, based on central limit theorem. So to, to learn more about it and for a discussion of robustness coverage and precision, see more details in the arena and also model 6.3. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to compare two scenarios. So usually simulation is used to be able to compare alternative system scenarios, configurations, or layouts. They can also use simulation to conduct sensitivity analysis. So what we're going to do is we're going to start first by comparing only two scenarios. And we'll use model 6.4. So model 6.4 is basically the same as model 6.3, where the only difference is that we go back again to 110 replications. We're going to add the file totalcost.dat to statistic module. And also for output column, we add total cost row. And we're going to do similar things for percent rejected. What that will allow us to do is that it allows us to save the output information to files for each replication. And then we look at two scenarios. We have the base case when all inputs, just as an original model 5.3, without any extra resources. And we also look at more resources case. In this case, we're going to add three trunk lines and increase the number of trunk lines to 29. We also will add three resources each of new sales, new tech 1, new tech 2, new tech 3, and new tech all. Recall that we use the variables there. So all we need to do is just go in and change the default value for our variables representing new sales, new tech 1, tech 2, new tech 3, and new tech all. It will be interesting for us to learn whether these changes from the base case to the more resources case have effect on total cost and per rejected, and what are the changes. So let's go ahead and do that in Arena. So here I open my model 6.2 and um, I renamed it into model 6.4 underscore base because first I'm going to do the base one. Just to demonstrate, we already have 110 replications because we didn't change 6.2 to 6.3, so it still remains 110 replications. So the next thing I want to do is make some changes for the output. So outputs are statistics. So statistics data module is located in advanced process. So I'm going to click on advanced process, click on statistics. And then find my output statistics, which are total cost output and percent rejected output. So I'm going to scroll here, and this is under output file. This is where I can make the changes. And so here I'm going to save it to my folder, and I'm going to call this total cost.dat.
and also here for the output file I'm gonna uh, name this as percent rejected dot dot and so either I'm gonna go there and uh, select or um, just type in the file name it will work the same way because this file is saved in this current category um, in this final um, in this folder and so but if I wanted to change the folder name I could always go and change the folder name um, but here's my percent rejected also and so now that I have these I'm gonna be writing those out um, to my file actually let me go ahead and do some more changes so let me create a new folder here for the base case and I name it model 6 for base case or just base and so I'm going to be saving the total cost of that into this new uh, folder called um, IE467 underscore model 64 underscore base and I'll do the same for percent rejected. I'm also going to be saving it into this IE467 model for 64 base. Otherwise, it would be saving it in my pre previous upper folder, IE467 models. And there's already a lot of things here. So to make it cleaner, I'm going to be saving it here. And the reason why it's going to be automatically, if I didn't do that like this, the reason it would automatically be saving it here is because that's where my model, this model here, 604 base dot book, is located. So you can see this is my model located in this folder. So automatically it would be saving it there. I want it to be saved here, so that's what I'm gonna do. So now important part also is to make sure that here in my setup. And run control in the, my run and run control I have batch run selected so you can see the batch run is selected so I'm good to go and so the next I could either click here run go or click this button go and then run it to get the results So now you can see here, this is 56, 60, and so on. Uh, what's happening is that uh, in this status bar, we can see that we are running our applications now 110 out of 110. So do I want to see the results? I could look at the results, of course. And that by default gives me the category of review report. which I didn't rename my model to the 6 yet, but I'm basically using model 5 modified. So now, under user specified is where my um, statistic output statistic, and that's on the next, carried over on the next page. So I could also turn to look, click it here, and that takes me to percent rejected and the total cost. So here, this is my simple average from 110 replications or 110 samples and here are my half width for percent rejected so I could have just used this and then plus minus will give me the confidence interval and that's basically uh, the interval in which an average value of percent rejected lies in um, was probability 0.95 and so similarly here for the total cost, right, this average and half-width gives me a uh, confidence interval. 
So what I want to do next, right, is demonstrate to you that I also got um, my files. So let me go ahead and do that. So now you can see um, these are the files that have just been created. So this is my base case. So the next thing I want to do is create a similar um, similar thing for the extra resources. So I want to produce the files for extra resources as well. So let me go ahead and do that. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to end my simulation run. And then I'm going to close off the uh, category of review report for now and then save this as the extra resource case so I'm going to call it extra and the rest of the name remains the same, just instead of base, I call it extra. Um, but of course, I need to make some changes. So if the changes that I need to do is I need to go to the to my variables and um, of course select the variables here. So you can see this is, oh, uh, that's the wrong variable. So you can see right now, it's all zero initial values. So uh, by default it's also zero but what I want to do is I want to add new sales new tech 1, new tech 2, new tech 3 and new tech all and so here I'm gonna change this to 3 and then go in and change this variable to 3 from the default of zero and do for is the rest of them the same thing? And just to be sure, let's check whether our set of resources has the resources that the uses uh, so as you remember in the schedule, those later people that we added, the more Larry, more Curly, and Herman, they should be included in the set. So let's see if this has. So it looks like that's correct. So we see Larry and Herman for product one, and I see Mo and Herman for product two, which is correct. And I see Curly and Herman, and that's good too. So we're good to go. Um, except I also want to change the number of trunk lines. So currently it's 26. That's a base case. We need to increase it by 3 to the 29. So after I do that, I should now be good. So I can save this. And I already have went to advance because remember I'm just modifying my model 6.4 uh, base and that model I went to the statistics and found my output and already put the output files right so the only thing I want to do if I left it like this it would just rewrite the files so I don't want this to happen so instead I'm gonna go ahead and change and so instead of saving this and uh, this folder, I'm going to create a new folder under this, right? So another subfolder. So I'm going to do a new subfolder. Gosh. Maybe let's just scroll down. New folder. And then my folder name is going to be IE467 model 64 extra and now I'm gonna be saving for the extra I'm gonna be saving it right rather than re, uh, overwriting the file if I did not do this it would overwrite the file which I don't want to happen 
And of course here as well, I need to go and save percent rejected also for into its own uh, folder. So notice that if I looked at my folder, if I looked at my at my folder, right, I can see that for for my folder that's base case, I already ran it, so it has these dead files for percent rejected and total cost, but for extra, I still don't have any, right? So as soon as I run it, it I will obtain that, right? So let me save this and let me. So of course I don't need to check. I know for sure run uh, control gives me the batch run. So I'm just gonna run this, and to demonstrate what is happening, uh, so you'll see. Let's run it. So you can see, 16, 19, 20, 25, right? Batch run goes really fast because it doesn't do any animation. It's as fast as run possible. So you can see that it's gonna soon run to 110. And so, of course, I could not, I don't have to look at the results, but let's go ahead and take a look. Just out of curiosity, compare it with what we saw before. So again, right, um, I'm going to user specified output, and here's my percent rejected total cost. So you can see that percent rejected has de decreased significantly for what we saw before. Um, and so um, the total cost has actually increased. So that's, that's what we see here, right? But does it make sense statistically? So the next thing we're going to do is to talk about that and we're going to be using the files that we just created. So again, here we are comparing the two scenarios and um, a reasonable but not correct idea is to make confidence intervals on expected outputs from each scenario and see if they overlap, look at total cost. So again, I stress that this is not correct idea. So if we uh, checked our, which we did, right, we looked at our uh, category of review reports from the base case, this is our category of review for the total cost. And this is for extra resources case. This is again total cost. So if we add it, subtract it and add it, these are the confidence intervals that we would get. So as you can see, right, they do not intersect, so significantly different, right? But we can't really claim that because statistically that makes no sense, right? We can't really use it this way. So this is not a correct way to go about it. So even though there is no overlap, we can't just say that, well, because there is no overlap, there is a significant difference because as I said, right, this is not a statistically valid conclusion. So instead, what we can do is we can compare means using the special tool for ARENA called Output Analyzer. And Output Analyzer is a separate application that operates on .dat files produced by ARENA. So as you saw in the output, we saved our data in .dat files so now we can be using those, as I promised, and analyze them, we can analyze them statistically. So we're gonna go ahead and launch, launch the output analyzer separately from Windows and not from Arena. And then we're gonna compare the means using the output analyzer. So let's go ahead uh, and do that and we're gonna save the output values as an expression of entries in a statistic data module. And so the type is output. So we, we have done that, right? So we did that for both total cost and percent rejected. Now we can use this, right? We didn't override the file names because we saved it in the two different, um, Right, so we didn't really overwrite it because we saved it in two different folders. 
So if you wanted to know, see, do, do that files are binary. So it would be hard for you to open it outside of output analyzer, but they can easily be read by output analyzer. So let's go ahead and take a look. So here I'm going to go to uh, my programs and then under the Rockwell software and under Arena there is my output analyzer. So I'm going to click on output analyzer because as I said uh, it's not among the tools. It needs to be opened outside. And so the next thing I want to do is I could create a new file by either clicking here new or I can say file new and this opens a new data group files and so if I wanted to save it I can save it as and then here under the uh, folder IE467 models I'm gonna create a new folder that's gonna be for my out, uh, output analyzer and I can call it output from model 64 and then it has the extension data group so DGR is an extension for a new data group file so I can save this and right now I don't have any files there so I'm gonna click on add and add some of my files so here I'm gonna first go to base and I can click on that and actually let's rename us as Space, just so we can see it easier and then again rename this one as base and let's select both of them well maybe we can't so hmm. Looks like an error. So let's see if I can add something from here to. So I might have messed up my file by renaming it. So let's see. Hmm, maybe not. Um, or maybe I forgot to stop the run, so let's make sure that the run is stop. Now let's try to also add this. Well, let's see whether we can actually do some analysis. So let's go to analyze and then compare means. And let's select the data file so we could use the percent rejected base and we can use the all the data together and we're also going to use percent rejected uh, regular or extra resources and again all the data together well apparently did not did not like that base one let's see hmm seems to have an error accessing file so let's let's see 
So let's instead just start a brand new data group file and add the extra resources. Let's say for percent rejected. And then also add the base. And so here it actually selected the file, so maybe the saving it right away was not a good idea. Um, and so let's also add for the base total cost and add for the extra. We're going to add total cost. So now that we have that, we can analyze. So let me close this off for now. And let me go analyze and then compare means. And then here we can add the files. So we're gonna let's go ahead and compare first the um, percent rejected, the base. So file data file A is gonna be percent rejected base, and then data file B is gonna be percent rejected. And we select lump here because we want to use the data from all the replications and then I click OK hmm. still not found so let's try again Rejected and then for um, let's let's go back. So this is for extra, so let me actually do the base percent rejected and then here for extra. Maybe saving them in the f as separate folders was not a good idea, so do not do that. Just rena rename them um, in the arena file. But there's always a workaround. So again, right, this is going to be the percent rejected like that. And this one is percent rejected base hmm. well, let's go ahead and save them all together in a single one so let me cancel this and cancel that and let me copy this real quick so I'm gonna go ahead and grab these and copy them here and maybe also rename them extra and then name this one as extra And let's see. Let's delete this one. And let's delete this one. And just replace them with the extra in the same folder. And let's now try to do compare means. So you can see now, right, it actually created this 
right? It created, compared the means for percent rejected. And what it did is it subtracted the data for each replication for from one and another. And this is where we got the difference, right? So this is kind of a reminder for us of what happens as we're looking at the difference. So it constructs the confidence intervals on difference. And if the constructed confidence intervals on interval on difference is uh, far away and does not intersect zero, then the means are um, not equal. There's a statistically significant difference. And this is a valid, statistically valid conclusion. And so again, we can also do compare uh, compare means again. So let's do compare means. And we could add additional comparison where we compare total cost base and total cost extra. And so we can actually do that all together. So again, pair t-test with 95% confidence. And so here, right, you can see this is different from what we saw before. This time we, we have two confidence intervals together. And again, this our confidence interval is far away. And this is our confidence interval for total cost. So of course, sometimes because the percent eject is sm so small and total cost is so large, sometimes it doesn't, it's not good to compare them visually this way. But we can always look here at the summary and the summary for the statistical comparison tell us, right, for percent rejected, the means are not equal at 0 0.05 uh, level. And for total cost, right, the means are not equal at 0 0.05 level. So these are both are statistical conclusions based on the difference for uh, the two files, right? So. For each of those 110 replications, we subtracted the differences for the output. And so clearly, right, there is a significant change from the base case to the extra case. So let's review how we did that, right? So again, we started output analyzer, um, and we, need, we did that outside of Arena, and then we opened a new data group, and basically we the data group is a list of dot day that files that we're interested in working on. And then we can save the data group as I showed you. And that gives us a dot DGR file extension. And then we can we click on add button to select the dot that files for the data group. And after that we actually used um, this analysis right through the output analyzer. We clicked on analyze and then compare means and then it gave us this menu option where we added the files, right, for two scenarios. So we can compare two files and we selected lumped because we want the data from all replications to gather. Because each replication, right, this, these are output statistics, so each replication produces a single value. So we, that's why it's selecting lumped. And again, right, we use the pair t test. And notice, right, as I mentioned before, right, do not scale display, right, because two output perform measures have different units. So this is what we got, right, and again, these are the summary information for the statistical testing, and this is a visual representation of it. So this, this is um, the final part right for part a and then next time we look at the process analyzer where we can compare more than um, two files um, and so again the key in the comparison is that the differences for both total cost and percent rejected they miss zero here they miss zero for percent rejected and here we miss zero for total cost and so conclusion is that, right, because 
the confidence intervals on differences both miss zero, then we conclude that there is statistically significant difference on both output performance measures. Of course, right, what we looked at before when we just compared the confidence intervals themselves, it wasn't correct, right? So it's important that we looked at the differences and compared them to zero. So that's the end of part, part A.